All right. Good evening, everyone. I uh, hope your October is going well. We're so excited to have you join us this evening live from the Marvel Museum in Georgetown. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a look back here. We've got some interesting old uh, carriages and hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit of touring the facility at the end. Um, so bear with us this evening. We're using a hotspot. Uh, we don't have internet access for, except for a hotspot. So have patience with us if there is a technical issue. Uh, my name is Salvatore Steely. I am Health and Wellness Program Director at Camp Rehoboth. We're so excited to bring you here for our third in a three-part series of Our Haunted History with Dr. Carroll. We've had such an interesting and fascinating two weeks, and I think you're going to be in for a special treat this evening. Uh, we're live from the Marble Museum in Georgetown, Delaware. Um, again, before we start, I just wanted to go over a couple technical details. Uh, the workshop is being held on location, so there might be some technical issues. If something happens that is not supernatural, please have patience with us. Again, we're working off of a hotspot. Uh, there's a question and answer box on the lower right-hand screen. So at the end of the presentation or during the presentation, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type them in and we'll get to them at the end of this evening. So you're in for a treat this evening with Dr. Carol Polio. Dr. Carol is founder of Intuitive Investigations and is currently director and lead investigator. She realized her abilities as a clairvoyant as a preteen. As often the case, she struggled with the influx of psychic information from those around her in the spirit world, ultimately deciding to push those abilities aside to pursue a career in science. <clears throat> Excuse me. Despite her efforts to downplay her abilities, visions and premonitions continue to make their way into her life. Over the years, those experiences prompted her to begin investigating the paranormal and tapping her, tapping into her clairvoyance by providing insightful personal readings for family and friends. So thank you, Dr. Carroll. Thank you all for attending this evening. And I need to make her the co-host. Again, sorry. There we go. I'm here. <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome everyone to the Marvel Carriage Museum. You can see a wonderful carriage there behind me. So tonight I'm going to follow the same format I followed in the last two evenings we've done these events. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the tools that I use to investigate real briefly. Um, talk some more about um, a little bit of the history that I, we know about this site. And then I'm going to show you some slides that have some audio um, evidence that I've collected here. Um, I have been here numerous times. I've investigated at least three times and there are many buildings here. So um, working with history is what I love to do the most, and so coming to these historic sites is kind of a fun part. Um, the spirits here are always, um, almost always in a good mood, and they want to talk to you. Um, some of the tools that we use, some of the simple tools, um, these are dowsing rods. So we use these for asking yes and no questions. You see them moving around. I'm not doing that. And um, sometimes they like to use them because they're familiar with them. So we're talking about older spirit, people that have passed on many years ago. Notice I'm not calling them ghosts, and the reason I don't is because um, I feel like that's a little disrespectful. These are our ancestors, and in Sussex County, lots of the uh, spirit we encounter um, have living relatives, so we want to be respectful. So lots of spirit like those. I also often use a pendulum. This is for yes and no type questions. Um, the entire time that we do an investigation, we're recording. And so we may hear answers to questions um, afterward. And then I have a bunch of other tools that we can use that we can hear real time. 
um, what's going on. So typically when I investigate, we do say maybe 15 minutes of just a pendulum or the and the dowsing rods together and we let spirit choose one. And then we will switch to 15 minutes with a spirit box, which allows spirit them to use radio frequencies to communicate with us. So you're gonna hear some of that as well. And then we also have some other devices here. I brought an ovulus today, um, and this will speak words when it's turned on. It'll be loud. I can turn it on. You can hear it. Um, hold on. And so just so you can get a sense of what that sounds like. Now it's not going to talk to me. Talk to me. Anyway, it's here. And then I have a, a K2 meter here. This picks up electromagnetic frequencies. So as you see it lighting up, it just said disease. <laughs> you see it light up, that means we're getting some interaction. Um, but that's, that's kind of a lower tech one. I also have a higher tech one here, which is a millimeter. So this one is more sensitive to spirit energy, in other words, um, less sensitive to things like cell phones and that sort of thing, but it, and it's digital. So those are just some of the things I have. I'm going to turn this guy off. He said um, terms and disease, so we're going to turn that off, right? All right. All right, so those are some of the things that we use on investigation. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the Marvel Carriage Museum. Now, I'm not a historian, and this one is a little challenging, so excuse me if I have to look at my notes. Um, because this property was owned by Nutter D. Marvel Sr., and he gathered buildings together. He collected historic buildings. He collected these carriages. He was a great collector. And so we're in the barrel barn, and the barrel barn... Um, here, they actually do rent it out normally for parties and that sort of thing. There are carriages in it now because they have some other things coming up. It was brought from the Henry Costner farm near Laurel. This farm was, this was originally on a farm in Laurel. Um, there is a schoolhouse, the Ellis School, which was built in 1833. That was brought here. There's a church on the property, the Epworth M.E. Church, that was built in 1890 in Laurel and moved here in 1983. So the church is an interesting place to get um, community spirit communication. You can also get married there if you want to. The Lynch Building, which is across from us, is a very long building. And the reason it's a very long building is because it's two Pennsylvania Railroad stations connected together one from Selbyville, one from Frankfurt. So again, lots of interesting activity in that. We, there's a blacksmith shop here from Harbison, and there is a service station with a gas pump that was restored in 2001. So when um, Netter Marvel passed on, he donated the entire property and everything on it and in it to the Georgetown Historical Society. So I just want to give a plug for them. The Georgetown Historical Society is our host today. So what's interesting about it is that it makes it interesting to investigate because we don't know a lot about who might have used these buildings. Um, none of them are homes, so unlike some of the other sites we've been to. None of them were homes or had hotels or anything. So we get some interesting um, activity here. Um, one of the investigations, I have a report here in one investigation, which is about two hours long, I had 25 uh, responses using the equipment, using the pendulum, but primarily the, the responses I'm talking about are not the pendulum responses. They are responses that I recorded either an electronic voice phenomenon, or through using one of the pieces of equipment I was talking about. So 25 voice responses to the questions does not count all the questions we asked using, you know, the simple stuff here, the pendulum and the dowsing rods. 
So a pretty interesting site. Let me um, share with you some of the evidence. So our evidence is audio evidence. And um, the way that I do this, I try to be as scientific as possible. So one response with a pendulum or one response, even on audio response, um, is not enough evidence. It, it could be um, a random response. It could not, if it's not a full sentence, if it's not related to what question we asked, it doesn't count as evidence. It has to be related to the question. It has to be a sentence or enough of a sentence that you know they're answering you. And then we try to use other information. So on the recording, we may end up hearing other responses that indicate we're talking to one spirit or one person over a period of time. So we try to get as much as we can. If we're having a really good conversation, um, that's when I take out my uh, Polaroid or instant camera. That's when I take a series of photos because I have found that when I do that, we get um, some interesting mists and things like that in the photo. So we try to compile numerous um, examples of evidence before we say, yes, we really think that this person is there. We hear one name, doesn't mean a lot. If we can come up with some other evidence that suggests that that person is here, then that's how we do that. We, as a scientist, you want more than one piece of evidence to say something is here. And even then we can always, you know, we can't definitively say a particular person is here, but we do want, we come to a conclusion that they're possibly here. So you may see that as I share my screen and share the slideshow a little bit. So let's, oops, get that going. All right. So here we are at the Carriage Museum, and there is a picture of uh, Mr. Marvel. And if you see on the right here, there is the barrel barn, and that is where we are. If you want to know why it's called a barrel barn, it's because of the shape of the roof is like a barrel. How's that for simple? So I always wondered that. I had to go look it up myself. <laughs> so you know how it goes. Um, so that's the barrel barn, that's where we are right now. So when I've investigated this site, there are so many buildings here. Um, here are some of the, the spirit uh, people we talked to. One was Elizabeth. Elizabeth was in the workman's barn, and she was actually uh, connected or attached to a lady's carriage from 1860, 1860s. Um, in the church, there is a nursery in the church, and there are several children um, that we have communicated with in the church. Um, we also uh, were speaking with someone who was at a funeral. Am I still online? Okay, there it goes. Looked like a little blip there. You're zoomed in. <laughs> there now. Hmm? You're on. You're good. All right. Um, so there was a funeral going on when we, we were communicating one time. So we'll share that. Um, a man that owns a horse named Magellan. Um, in the telephone museum, it's very interesting. There's a lot of electronic equipment in there, and that seems to draw spirit and allow them to communicate. And so we've had some really interesting communications in there uh, with someone named Mark and someone named Winifred, which is a male name. Interestingly, just to throw it out there, because I, I don't have the recording of Winifred, when I mentioned that to Miss Rosalie, who typically runs the museum, um, he said he was a, we were talking to employees, the phone company, she said she knew a man named Winifred that worked for the phone company. So, you know, sometimes we piece things together in an interesting way. And then Mr. Marvel does visit, and Miss Eleanor worked for him, and so we have conversed with them in the Lynch building. And then here in the um, barrel barn itself, uh, Handy Boy, I'll talk a little bit more about him. So we have a horse spirit here. And then the last time we were here, we spoke with a woman and a boy that were here. So I'm going to play some audio for you. 
if you can't hear it, it's best heard with headphones. Hopefully you, I chose some that you could hear the best. Um, but if you want to go and listen to them, all of the recordings. So remember I said there were 25 in just one trip. We're going to just hear like five of them. So if you want to hear some of the other evidence, that's the YouTube channel that I have, that I have years worth of recordings on from these sites. So stop by there so you can listen. So the first time I visited here, um, I walked around with Miss Rosalie. When I came into this room, um, there are two or three cases of horse tack against the walls. And I was standing there and I felt, you know how a horse comes up over, a lot of times will come up over your shoulder to get its, its um, nose rubbed and to hang over you like that. I felt that happen to me. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is, there's a horse spirit here. So I asked him what his name was. And in my mind, this is where the clairvoyance kicks in. I heard Handy. So I went back and I went online. I love to do research. And I found a horse named Handy Boy. So Handy Boy is here. Um, of course, he doesn't speak. He's not Mr. Ed. So we have a little bit of a problem. How do we communicate with him? I will say that we have, when we have investigated in here and tried to, you know, to talk to him and ask him if he's here, we have gotten knocking, not just once. So there's definitely a response that we get when we're talking about Handy Boy, um, but obviously not, he's not talking to us. But I just wanted to show you that if you look on this slide, you can actually see his name, Handy Boy, is there as a racehorse for an event. And um, Georgetown did have a raceway, and that's one of the things that Mr. Nutter was involved with is the trotters, is horse racing. So then this is in the telephone museum, and it's kind of an interesting thing because the picture that you see is one of my photos for, from the instant camera. And at the time we were having this conversation, it was a class I teach a um, not for credit, what do they call it? personal enrichment class at Delaware Tech to do investigation. We go on an investigation. And so the class was all sitting around and we were having this great conversation. And we asked Spirit, you know, what is your name? Tell me your name. And we heard it out loud. So we heard the answer out loud. Half of the room, there were about 10 of us, 12 of us kind of bunched into the telephone museum. Half heard the name, the other half heard the sound, but didn't know what it said. And at that time, we were having this really great conversation, I took this picture. And so you can see that there's a, a mist in the corner of this picture. And so by itself, Maybe you would say it's not, it's just a picture. But when you take a picture, you frame it. So you take multiple pictures. Also, the other part of the evidence is that we were having a conversation with someone. We heard it out loud. So a very strong conversation with someone. And then when we reviewed the recordings, we heard him say his name again. So his name is Mark and he said it so that the entire group of people could hear him say it out loud. And then he also went and said it on the recording when we couldn't hear it. And we have this evidence of this picture. So I'm gonna play this and hopefully you'll be able to hear it too. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. The so Mark told us his name twice that night and we believe his last name might be Whitney but we're not sure because we only got that once. And um, he was an employee of the telephone company. So that was pretty cool. So here's another um, telephone museum recording. And I think the interesting thing about asking questions of spirit when you're doing an investigation is you can ask them, do you know the name of the people here? Do you know who works here? Who runs it? And Talk about getting evidence when you get the specific answer that you're looking for, 
um, you know that you're speaking with someone. You're not just hearing random things coming through one of these devices. So this is asking, do you know who runs the museum? Do you know the name of the woman who runs this museum? It's Rose. Do you know the name of the woman who runs this museum? And if, if you were paying attention, Miss Rosalie is always here and she's primarily responsible for running this museum uh, for the Georgetown Historical Society. So that gives you, talk about evidence, that gives you some hint that you're dealing with an intelligent response, an intelligent entity or person or whatever, because they're answering your question directly. It's kind of interesting too, when you ask who's here, um, and I was just talking about a situation where we were investigating and we said, well, can you tell us who's here? And we were using the spirit box, which gives you immediate words in response. And we were using that, can you say who's here? And, you know, you might expect that someone's named John or even Carol, but this um, spirit box named everyone in the room and their names weren't normal like that. They were Hiram and Alita, Maria and Carol, and they named all of them, all of us. So it's pretty interesting when that happens. So this one is at the little church and um, not in the nursery, but in the church itself. And we were talking about uh, attending a funeral. So the pendulum was telling us that they were attending a funeral. So this is, I believe, a spirit box response when we ask, well, who are you here for? Who passed on? Can you tell us the name of who passed on and died? Henderson. <laughs> Can you tell us the name of who passed on and died? So it's really interesting you get a full last name, so I'm assuming that's the last name of the person. Uh, but we don't know enough to do the research to find out in all the years that it was a church whether someone, um, clearly someone named Henderson passed on, most likely, because it's a fairly common name, but it's just interesting. When you get a whole name like that, you know something's happening. All right. So this is in the workman's barn. Okay, so that's across from us in a, in a smaller barn. And um, speaking with a male in there, and we asked him if he was here with his horse, and he said yes. So he said, well, what's, what's your horse's name? What's the horse's name that's with you? Magellan. Magellan. What's the horse's name that's with you? Magellan. So that's pretty interesting. Um, all right. Is that my last one? What's the horse's name that's with you? All right. So this is something that... Um, I can appreciate having done this a lot, and hopefully you will appreciate appreciate it as well. If you can imagine that if you go to a site that's been investigated a lot, especially, this is true. I would think that spirit probably gets tired of asking the same questions, being asked the same question, you know, 50 times, what's your name? Um, but also sometimes questions they don't think are very uh, good or smart or intelligent or whatever, or insulting. So sometimes spirit can get a little bit snarky, and this is one of those times. So I thought you would appreciate this. Um, this is the um, ladies' spring wagon. That's the picture that you see here. It's from the 1860s. And we had a pretty long conversation with a woman who um, I believe owned it or certainly used it a lot, but I assume she owned it because she talked to us for quite a bit. But we were asking her, someone, one of my students asked her if she drove her own carriage. So here is her response to that. Did you drive your own carriage? That's just stupid. Did you drive your own carriage? <laughs> That's just stupid. What I think she's saying is, why would a woman drive her own carriage? You know, if you're a woman of means, you have someone to do that. So I just thought you would appreciate that little bit of snark that we get every once in a while. And so that's, I think, 
Did you drive your car? So that's, those are the audio um, pieces that I have, and that's the information I have for right now. Um, let me close that down. Stop sharing. I also have here, just for interest sake here, I brought with me this ghost camera. And a ghost camera is an interesting piece of equipment because what it does is it uses the connect gaming system and it will pick up an actual picture if there is a spirit there um, and you can record it. And they appear like a skeleton if you've ever used um, the connect system for gaming. Um, oh, can you see they can't see that? I just was looking at it and it was picking up the wheel. And then you can record it. And it's a pretty nifty piece of equipment. I was hoping I would get Handy Boy on it tonight. But I brought it along. Um, if someone stands on the other side of it, it will um, make a skeleton out of them. But it also can make skeletons out of square things, things with angles. So you have to know what you're doing. You can't just like aim it and say, oh, I've got a skeleton. Because it really likes those wagon wheels. And it was making a really cool little skeleton around the wagon wheels. But it's a, it's a more advanced tool, more expensive tool, but um, I'd give anything to get a skeleton of, of Handy Boy over there, but I'm getting pretty much a wagon wheel right now. So I brought that along. Um, but I'm open for questions. If people want to ask some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Excuse me. I don't think we have any questions this evening. Um, there's a little bit of a lag on Facebook. So okay. Uh, no questions this evening. So what I recommend what we can do is um, I can transfer everything over to my phone and we can take a walk over to the telephone museum. Okay. Does that, that sound cool. okay? Yeah. All right. So let's log in. Let's bring stuff with us. <laughs> So we can, do I need to log out or should I just leave it? Um, you'll have to make me the host, but let me, let me sign in first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll switch over to my phone as soon as I can get in. So the telephone museum is pretty cool and pretty crazy crowded with phones and such. Not just phones, everything. We're getting a 1.1 on the millimeter. Um, so somebody wants us, you want us to go to the, do you want us to go? Is it lighting up? No. Do you want us to stay? Do you want us to stay here? A little bit. The millimeter said one point it's going up again. Every time I say something about that, then this is lighting up to three. Huh. <laughs> and I have, well, I have nothing around me that should be doing that. So somebody's here with us. Who's here with us? I mean, if you're just getting out. Supposed to leave. Should I just stay out of it? Uh, no, I'm not back in. Okay. Hey there, we got bumped. And we're going to get Dr. Carroll back on the new question from Joanne. Okay. So, um, Dr. Uh, Carroll, the question is what first brought you to the farm and where? Um, where you asked to investigate something. And let me get you back on here. Hold on. And I'll make you the host. All right, you should be back on. All right. Um, well, I first came here looking for, let's see, where, um, here I am, um, looking for a site to bring a class to to investigate. And I prefer historic sites, so I came here to do a tour, just was free to see if it would work with them to do it. 
And um, that's started coming here. And I've been here numerous times since then. And my focus has been on historic sites. It might be coming from your program. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but um, that's what I've been doing. That's my interest is historic. So I'm not, I do work with have issues, but I, my focus is historic. So I have been to as many of the historic sites as I can. I don't know if I've missed any. The meters keep going off here, so this is really, there's, the, we're having some interesting activity here. But that's my interest area is, is history because it informs us. I mean, we get to ask questions. And like I said, here's a woman telling me, why would I drive my own carriage? Like, what, <laughs> what, kind, of, what kind of question is that? Um, but it's good because it reminds us about the way that things were for women and people at that time. So, if you were well to do, you had someone that drove your carriage. So that was my interest has has been history. My background is as a chief scientist for the national parks. So even though I was on the environmental side, every project that I did, I had to comply with all the historical preservation requirements. And so I gained that great appreciation for history while in that that career. And so I just really like it. And to be honest with you, um, some of these sites, because they have spirit activity, it helps keep the, keeps the lights on. In other words, I don't. It doesn't matter why people are coming if they're coming to this site and they're donating and they're keeping this site going, even if it's because of spirit activity. What matters is that they're pre we're preserving these sites. So that's why I really like it. I don't. That's why I don't like. Um, I don't care to go to asylums and prisons and those sort of places because. But energy is all different, and these places, historic sites, really need us to support them and to keep preserving them for the future. I hope that answered the question. If you have a second. Yeah, the second question, were there any people that were enslaved on this farm on this property that you know of? I, that I don't know. Um, we have never asked that question, and that's a challenge for here because this barn wasn't here. So. If we're in a building and asking the question, it would relate to wherever, most likely wherever the building was. So I don't know the answer to that. So how about we, um, I'm going to use my laptop, okay. and we'll just take a walk over to the telephone museum and see if we can get it to work. So if for some reason we get disconnected, we can write it us, but hopefully you can stick around. And we're going to mosey on over to the telephone museum. All right. Um, stick with us. Quit recording device, pendulum, just to see. Did I freeze? 